here is, let's see here, it is dependent on uh, the big D of the shoulder and the small D of the shoulder, um, the radius of the fillet, and the small radi uh, diameter of the shoulder. So we know that uh, big D is equal to, going back here, uh, seven, 1 and 7 eighths. So that is uh, 1.875, 1.875 inches. You know, small d is equal to 1 and 5 eighths, which is 1.625. And our fillet radius is, so let's say, 1 16th of an inch. So is that uh, 0 0.0675, 0 0.0675, I believe. 625, how about that? All right, there we go, inches. So uh, going to our table, we see uh, that we need D over D. So D over D is going to be equal to 1.875 divided by 1.6. To five, which is 1.15, and our R over D is e going to be equal to uh, 0 0.038. So 0.038. So this gives a uh, concentration factor. So it's going to be called KT which is equal to uh, roughly 2.05. So KT is what you're going to use or would use if you wanted to figure out the maximum stress in the shaft. Uh, this is in static terms though, so your timesing this by your nominal stress will give you your maximum stress. But since we're, we want to figure out, uh, as well as our yield criteria, uh, we want to figure out our fatigue and so uh, we actually have to use a notch sensitivity factor to calculate a different concentration factor for in terms of fatigue so the equation that you use here is uh, actually KF which is your fatigue concentration factor is equal to 1 plus Q times by KT minus 1 so as you see that uh, KT is always going to be uh, KT minus 1 is going to be most likely, uh, well it's going to be greater than 0, but your Q is always between 0 and 1, so 1 plus uh, this will actually give you a smaller number than KT, so KF will always be smaller than KT, always. So using our uh, figure 620 out of Shigley's, we can calculate the notch sensitivity, which is Q. Uh, so that is dependent on your notch radius, which is, we use our fillet radius, and it's also dependent on your ultimate tensile strength. So in order to determine what Q is, you have to go back to the question here and try to figure out what the ultimate tensile strength is. And so that's what you need to use to look up uh, Q. So uh, AC 1040 cold drawn steel. Look in the back of the book on table A20, and we have a cold drawn steel 1040 with a ultimate tensile strength of 85 ksi. So let's go back here. We have SCT, which is equal to 85 ksi, um, and so that gives a Q off the graph, we know our notch radius is uh, 0 0.0625 uh, and which is right here um, so with 85 and 0 0.0625 we see that we are in the range of uh, 0.77 for Q 0 0.77 so with that we can calculate our KF which is now equal to 1 plus so equal to 1 plus 0.77 times by KT which is 2.05 minus 1 which is equal to 
uh, 1.81, let's say. Uh, and so in this question, remember how I said that the speed doesn't really matter? Uh, yes, that's, that's still true. Um, so with this, our bending moment gives us an alternating stress, but we don't have any mid-range stress. Um, I mean, sure, if we had torsion, then it would be a constant. I mean, there has to be something spinning the shaft to make it go 1600 RPM. <clears throat> and we do need a torque, but there is no torque uh, you know, shown in this problem. So we, we actually have no mid-range stress at all. So what we have to do is uh, calculate our nominal stress. So nominal bending stress. So that's sigma uh, xx, and we'll call it nom. So that's just general, that's like the lowest amount before you add any safety factors. So what we're going to do is we're going to go 14.75 kip in. Bring this all the way over. So this is fully reversed bending stress. And we can actually call this A because it's alternating, but it's nominal still. We haven't added any safety factors. Just not safety factors, sorry, but uh, just additional factors in general. So we're going to times this by the radius of our smaller portion of the shaft uh, to the left of the shoulder, right here. So that's going to be half of D right here. So we're going to go 1.625 inches divided by 2. And this whole entire thing is going to be divided by the area of inertia for the smaller uh, shaft. So that's going to be pi divided by 64 times by 1.625 to the power of 4. Um, so that's going to give us, which is uh, 35.01 KSI. Um, so the equation that you calculate uh, to figure out your actual sigma sigma alternating prime, which is your von Mies stress, your complete equivalent alternating stress is equal to the square root of your K uh, concentration factor for fatigue times by your bending, your sigma bend plus um, your other factors which is actually uh, KF which is another KF so actually I should actually change these to KF1 KF2 times by your axial stress so Sigma axial uh, and this is actually divided by 0.085. If you guys are wondering, this is actually equation 655, and for the mid-range, it's 656 in Shigley's 8th edition. And so this is going to be squared, plus you have to add 3 times by uh, your KFS of from torsion times by your shear from torsion. So that's going to be squared, and then we have to close it off with uh, the bracket for the square root. So actually, I'm going to put this on the other line here. And so, as you see, we don't. All of these have to be alternating stresses. So this, we don't have any axial, so it's actually zero. And our shear from torsion, we don't have any torsion, so we don't have this. And so for the other equation for sigma m, I'll actually just write it down for you guys. Let's see here. M, it's pretty much the exact same thing, um, but this, all of these stresses here, have to be mid-range stresses. They cannot be alternating stresses. And now in this one, we actually don't have the factor of 0.85. Um, and 
pretty much everything is the same here. Oh, whoops, looks like something got deleted there. So this A and M can be sort of interchanged, um, and the only difference was the 0.85 that got deleted there. So let's go on, go ahead and calculate our uh, sigma A, which is our von Mies alternating equivalent stress. And since we don't have any torsion stress or anything like that, we just know that it's going to be our our uh, concentration fatigue factor, which is 1.81 times by our sigma nom, which is uh, this here. So 1.81 times by 35.01 ksi. It's just going to give uh, a little bit bigger of a number. Or oh, sorry, it's not 1.8, it's 8.1. KSI. So with this, uh, we need to use Goodman criteria to figure out if this thing is going to have a uh, safety factor greater than 1, which uh, says that we have an infinite fatigue life. So uh, Goodman's, or we should say mod Goodman's, modified Goodman's, Goodman uh, fatigue criterion gives uh, Sig A prime divided by SC plus Sig M prime divided by SUT must be 1 divided by N, where N is our safety factor. So just uh, checking here, they never gave us a uh, uh, safety, uh, sorry, uh, fatigue, stress, endurance level. So uh, we're going to have to calculate this guy right here. We know that this one, the sigma m is zero, so we don't have to care about SUT. So, anyways, S S E is um, actually calculated uh, based on SUT and a bunch of other factors, and these factors are called Marn factors. So let's just uh, Let's just go over here. So first off the bat, SE prime, which is the unmodified endurance level limit, sorry, is equal to uh, 0.5 of SUT, as long as SUT is less than 200 KSI, which is usually always the case. It's pretty hard to find steel that goes up that high. Um, so as we figured out before, Excuse me. We just have SUT of 85. So uh, let's just put that down as uh, 42.5 KSI. So our MARN factors go from KA to all the way to KF, and they're dependent on a bunch of various things. Um, for example, KA is equal to A times SUT to the power of B, or A and B are. Uh, factors depending on if it was cold drawn, machined, uh, hard drawn, forged, uh, etc. So for this one, I think the question said it is uh, machined. So we have to go to table 6-2 in Shigley's and uh, go down to the machined or cold drawn factors. So this is actually equal to um, A, which is 2.7 